गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द मेथड ऑफ रेसिड्यूअल्स नाउ द मेथड ऑफ रेसिड्यूअल्स इज वन ऑफ द मेथड्स टू डिटरमाइन द वैल्यू ऑफ के दैट इज द एब्जॉर्बशन रेट कॉन्स्टेंट सो व्हाट वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू इज वी आर ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ के ए दैट इज एब्जॉर्बशन रेट कॉन्स्टेंट रिमेंबर देयर आर टू मेथड्स टू डिटरमाइन दिस वन इज द मेथड ऑफ रेसिड्यूअल्स एंड सेकंड इज द वैगनर नेल्सन मेथड व्हिच हैज ऑलरेडी बीन डिस्कस्ड नाउ द मेथड ऑफ रेसिड्यूअल्स इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज पीलिंग feathering and also stripping see the purpose of the method of residuals is to resolve a multi exponential equation into its individual components say let us take the example of one compartment open model extra vascular administration so if you remember the equation was c is equal to k a F x not divided by v d k a minus k e e to the power minus k e t minus e to the power minus k a t. This was the general expression or the general equation for the plasma concentration in case of extra vascular administration. Now, as we can see, this equation has two exponential terms. In case of intravenous administration, we only had one exponential term that was in terms of elimination rate constant. But here we have two components: one is for elimination, one is for absorption. So we cannot directly make a graph of log c versus time in order to obtain the elimination rate constant. We will have to resolve both these components, and this is called as the method of residuals. So what we exactly do in method of residuals is the first step is that. we are considering this term this whole term as a constant as a hybrid constant called as capital a now if we consider this expression to be constant the equation reduces to c is equal to a e to the power minus k e t minus a e to the power minus k a t so this is our equation now after removing this part as a constant now let us consider that when elimination happens in case of elimination the absorption process will now approach zero when elimination starts the rate of absorption will decline or the absorption term approaches zero this means that this component will approach zero when when we are talking about elimination so when the elimination of the drug starts the absorption term approaches zero or we can say that this component c becomes equal to a e to the power minus k e t we have replaced this term by zero now converting into log form we have log is equal to log a minus k e t upon 2.303 now this over here you can see a back reverse arrow on top of c this means that this concentration is the back extrapolated value what is back extrapolated value we will just consider this in a moment now let us consider this suppose in case we subtract the value of back extrapolated concentration from the true concentration value this consider this as equation 1 And consider this as equation two. So C reverse back extrapolated minus C. What is this value going to come out to? A e to the power minus k a t. These both terms cancel out. Now this value, the back extrapolated minus the true concentration, is called as the residual concentration. residual concentration represented by cr that is equal to a e to the power minus k a t on converting this into log form what do we get log of cr is equal to log a minus k a t upon 2.303 so if you can see two equations one this And this one, 
we have the values of ke and ke we have resolved both the components so this means that if now we plot a graph of log c versus time we can have two individual lines or two individual curves two individual straight lines from which we can determine the value of ke and ke from the slope let us consider the graph this is log c value on y axis value of time on x axis this is the this curve indicates the true plasma concentration the true plasma concentration c now the slope of this line this is the true plasma concentration curve and the slope of this line is going to be equal to minus ke upon 2.303 from this curve we can determine the elimination rate constant now if we back extrapolate this line remember what is extrapolation if we back extrapolate this line we are determining this c with a reverse arrow if we back extrapolate this line towards the y axis this is what we are going to get now a point is going to come where a point of intersection is achieved where the true plasma concentration and the residual concentration will intersect each other once again i am repeating a point is achieved where the true plasma concentration on back extrapolation intersects with the residual concentration this curve is the residual curve residual curve that means a plot of log cr with time the residual curve the slope of this line is going to be equal to the slope of this line is equal to minus ka upon 2.303 so using the same graph using the same values of concentration and time we have back extrapolated this curve and determined the value of ka also in the same plot now this duration this time is called as t not or t0 which represents lag time what is lag time see ideally what should happen is that the true plasma concentration and the residual curve should intersect each other at zero point that is when time t is equal to zero but in most cases this does not happen and the intersection happens at a time when t is not zero or t is more than zero so this time duration is the lag time and what is the lag time it is the difference it is the difference between the time of administration and the start of absorption do not confuse this t0 with onset of action this is not onset of time or onset of action this is just the difference between when the drug is administered and the start of absorption now one more thing this method is best suitable when the difference between ka and ke is more than 3 that is there should be a considerable significant difference between ka and ke which means that generally the value of ka should be more than ke but in some cases say in the case of iv bolus administration of some drugs like isoprenorin what happens is that the value of ke obtained is much higher the value of ke obtained is much higher see in normal cases the value of ka should be more than ke but in some cases the value of ke becomes more than ke so what happens is now that the true plasma concentration curve gives you the value of ka while the residual curve is going to give you the value of ke see in normal circumstances the true plasma concentration curve from the slope gives you value of ke while the residual curve gives you the value of ke but in some cases as discussed 
the values are exchanged. So that is the true plasma concentration curve gives the value of Ka while the residual curve gives the value of Ke. This happens in cases of drugs like isoprenaline. Okay, and this is called as the flip flop phenomena. Very important. This is called as flip flop phenomena. When flip flop means when the curves or the lines they exchange their final values. Ka and Ke final values are exchanged. Flip flop phenomena. Now, one more thing the method of residuals, also called as the curve fitting method, is best suited for drugs which follow one compartment, open kinetics, maybe by extravascular administration or IV bolus administration. They are completely absorbed by one compartment kinetics. So this was the method of residuals. The method, uh, second method for determination of uh, Ka, that is Wagner-Nelson method, has already been discussed. So revise both these methods. There are two methods to determine Ka: method of residuals, also called as peeling, feathering, stripping, or the curve fitting method. And the second is Wagner-Nelson method. So with this, we have almost completed the one compartment kinetics. In the next class, we shall start with multi-compartment models and the two-compartment models. Till then, thank you. Keep studying.